Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of Joburg Today. I am your host, Leroy Viaggi. Save the Children Foundation says it's time that civil society, government, and relevant institutions come together to protect children against violence and abuse. This was said at a recently launched report entitled Violence Unwrapped. Enough is enough. That's the message from the Save the Children's Violence Unwrapped campaign, which uses art as an agent of engagement and social change. The exhibition features a giant egg wrapped in bandages that contains messages, facts and stories about violence against children. Constitutional Hill has a remarkable history. During apartheid, it was used as a prison for political activists that stood up against the regime. Today, it is a popular venue that hosts events and art exhibitions. But this is not an art exhibition. It's the opportunity for Save the Children to unpack poignant statements made by children themselves who were victims of violence and to raise the awareness of the costs of violence against children. You know, the, the shocking thing about South, Af South Africa is that we're probably one of the most violent countries. This, this study that was done was also done in, in South Asia, I think. Um, and the, the numbers are less. Uh, the cost is much less than what it is in, in, in South Africa. Incidents of violence have been further categorized in the report to highlight how children are abused in various ways. So the, the different types of violence we looked at was um, childhood physical abuse, childhood sexual abuse, childhood emotional abuse. And the fourth one, I w which is very important, is neglect. Neglect is often hidden. Neglect is not meeting the children's basic needs. And that's actually seen as a form of violence because it means caregivers who are responsible in protecting children are not engaged in this child's livelihood and well-being. So we looked at these are the four main types of violence. And this is what data was available on. I can give you some statistics. For example, um, the the statistics were based on the Optimus Study Foundation, which was released earlier this year. So we were really, really lucky that the first sets of nationally, uh, national, nationally representative prevalence data on how much violence do we see in the country, of violence against children, was actually released this year. This is the first one. So what they found was um, in South Africa, the prevalence of sexual violence is around uh, 7%. The prevalence of physical, childhood physical violence is around 26%. 13% for emotional violence and for neglect it's actually 12% on average. It all comes down eventually to rands and cents. It's a powerful message because it is the cost of inaction, meaning this is what it cost our society because we did not intervene and prevent children from experiencing violence. As a result, of experiences of uh, abuse and violence when individuals were children, they were not able to reach their full potential. They were not able to become contributing members of society. They, due to, for example, um, uh, school dropouts, they were not able, to, for, I'll give you one example that contributed to, uh, towards this cost is an individual who experienced physical violence as a child earns on average 11.7% less a month in their monthly income than an individual who did not experience physical violence. Nice. Another, another example is an individual who experienced emotional violence as a child earns 9.2 percent less than an individual who did not. Emotional violence is simply, it's, it's very much um, verbal violence. I wish uh, a parent telling a child, when you were a child experiencing a parent saying, I wish you were never born, I wish you died, I hate you. Experiencing that means that Years later, when you do earn an income, you earn 9.2% less. When you earn, when you add all of this up, this is a hu the human capital of our society. Children who experience all of this are at risk of a host of negative outcomes. And as a result, it's a cost to our economy. It has an impact on our economy. And so that's really the important message here. This is money that we've lost because we did not protect children from experiencing violence. Nishina Mohammed for Jobuk Today. Come, be a part of the conversation by liking our Facebook page. That's joburgtoday.tv. Follow the real trend in Joburg on our Twitter account at Joburg Today. For any nation to be prosperous, it must invest in the future. Children not only need love and protection, but also education. 2016 marks the 21st anniversary of the Nelson Mandela Children's Fund. The foundation says it's time to reflect on their new role and responsibility in ensuring that children remain the nation's greatest treasure 
and that the rights of children remain at the forefront of the country's agenda. 2.5 million children go hungry in South Africa each year, which has far-reaching and long-term consequences. Two million children in South Africa live in backyard dwellings and informal settlements. The risk of sexual abuse and communicable diseases are on the increase. Now, these are some of the findings of the Deloitte report titled The State of the South African Child, released and presented here at the Nelson Mandela Foundation. Here are more startling statistics. Children in informal and traditional housing face dual challenges of a lack of access to services and the consequence of overcrowding. Five million children still use unventilated pit latrines, buckets or open land. 85% of children in traditional housing do not have clean water nearby. Would I would change the spatial living. I would ensure that everyone has got a proper house, whatever, even if it's not a house, proper spaces for accommodation where all the basic needs are served electricity, water and sanitation being key. Water and sanitation being absolutely key. So if you say there is nothing, we don't have money, what, it's one thing we would deliver. So water and sanitation and safety for every child. The issue of kids on the street is a complicated issue. Given the large income gaps in the country, more and more children end up on the streets. It's, it's going to always be very difficult to deal with children in the streets because it's, it, there, there are lots of socio um, economic and psychological reasons why children are in the streets. If I'm, if I'm to look at the data we have and we look at the number of children who drop out of school it is, and we look at the levels of poverty, it's not surprising that we end up with so many children living in the streets. The question is why do children leave the school system so early? Because if we kept them in the school system, if we provided quality education for every child, the chances are they would stay in school. And I know this because in some areas where we've been confronted with children living in the streets, we have not bothered ourselves so much about the fact that they live in the streets. Mm. We have made sure that they go to school, even if they go back to the street. But first they go to school. In a year's time, they change and decide not to live in the street anymore. Because you know what? They have purpose. They suddenly know what they want to do with their lives. Mm. So, so long as the school system can't hold the children in the, inside the school system longer. We're in crisis. It's shocking to note how some of the nation's educators are failing children. It could be a corporal punishment, it could be sexual abuse, uh, where teachers are, are having relationships with children and, 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 and in some cases impregnate them. Uh, that happens a lot and uh, in terms of what anecdotal, let me put it that way, but we are not getting the information from the Department of Education on the teachers who have been found guilty on, on those cases. We just hear about it in the papers. Issue of corporal punishment, corporal punishment is, is, has been uh, banned in schools, but those teachers, we don't get them to come to the register who are still using corporal punishment. So there's a lot of information there that still needs to be dealt with uh, as, as a sector who are dealing with children so that we are all on board and we, we work together, as it was ex uh, expressed today. It is hoped that the findings of this report will set in motion a chain of new efforts to change the way everyone in society treats children and the youth. Nashina Mohammed for Joburg Today. Hello everyone, my name is Kanyam Kangisa and you are watching Joburg Today. And finally, the Huffington Post was recently launched in Joburg this past Sunday and we were there. A select group of journalists and media personalities attended the official launch of the Huffington Post in Johannesburg on Sunday. The CEO, Jared Grust, originally from Joburg, gave a brief insight into this venture. When my parents left South Africa, it was shortly after the Soweto uprising, and I think, um, I don't know the history as well as many of you do, but one of the key factors in that was the desire of the government to impose language in schools. And I think what's really, really important is the role of language in being able to express yourselves and have your voice heard. And I think one thing that's really, really powerful is what we're going to do with our platform here in South Africa. There's never been a more important time 
for people, individuals, and communities to express themselves. Huffington Post has always been a place for communities to come together, to share their voices. And one thing that's really, really exciting about what we're doing here in South Africa is giving a blogging platform, um, opening it up to South African people in each of the languages that are spoken. And it's such a rich, vibrant, diverse country like South Africa to allow people to express themselves in their uh, local languages um, is extraordinarily important. And that's it for today's show, but if you want to know more about what's happening in and around Johannesburg, check out our playlist. From me, Leroy, and the guys behind the scenes, Till next time.